We're back. Jujutsu Kaisen. Jujutsu Kaisen already messing up names. Season 2, Episode 1. Got kind of a blank slate. Season 1 ended with the kids just doing their thing after just a whole bunch of intense arcs. Ah, yes, the most dangerous place on earth Japanese alleyways. Is it me or does he seem slightly unsatisfied with his job? <laughs> so that's ghetto, right? I was under the distinct impression that Gojo took care of him at the end of the movie. But maybe he's just too good of a villain to let go, especially since he's so important for Gojo. I mean, the Jujutsu Sorcerer life is not an enviable one. If you're fighting tirelessly to do what feels right, and that means constantly combating or confronting evil or just the worst elements of humanity because that's what curses are, and you see other people blissfully unaware of that, benefiting from your sacrifice, not having to deal with any of the repercussions, taking what they have for granted, even contributing to the evil, perhaps because of lack of awareness of the consequences and just total ignorance, how do you not become bitter? How do you not become resentful? Unless you are so deeply convicted in the cause for itself and what it means for you and can extend that kind of empathy and understanding for people who just don't know and love them despite their flaws. And is this not a risk for many of the Jujutsu sorcerers, especially the kids who are in real time trying to figure out what this means to them and what their purposes are. Because that was such a big part of season one. It's like having this imperfect aim or mission that is on the right track, perhaps in the sense that they're seeking meaning or they're seeking answers but is limited in terms of its nuance and scope, depth. How many of them contain that same risk? This family life is too peaceful. I was expecting curses. Mad cow disease also. Yeah, that's, that's a curse. That's going to create a lot of curses. One thing I've always liked about this idea, and I think this show does really well, is that the curses have physical forms, they're things to defeat, but there's a real-life parallel and reality to it as well, because the general sentiments that are affecting a, a population will actually have tangible effects. Yeah, and speaking of, like, the very people you're trying to help perpetuating the very problem. That sign serves only as an encouragement. Reagan would approve. <laughs> wow, interesting way to start. Is this... Wait, wait, I'm so confused. Isn't this one of the teachers? This is Gojo's colleague, no? Oh, and this is, uh, wait, this is Money Girl. Is this a flashback? That overcharging line makes extra sense. So these are Gojo's peers, no? Do we get to see young Gojo? So maybe Ghetto actually is dead, and this is just, like, upper rank sorcerers, the high school years. <laughs> she sure is confident. Maybe if you clean up some of this trash. That also is very Bob Psycho. She's playing with her. She's enjoying her fear. Why separate? Why separate? Except for laughs. I feel like that mirror would have scared the crap out of me. Yeah, if you yell when you open a door, it protects you. That's the jutsu. That is the almost uncanny thing so far. Why are the clothes so neatly laid out in this house of trash? Yeah, I don't know. Cute. If it's someone else's house, it's cute. <laughs> if it's your house, it sucks. Giving her exactly what she wants. Hmm? 
ここは一階だよ。はあ。え私は一階の廊下を歩いてきたんだ。はあ。私はもう三回見ている。Oh, it's one of these repeating dungeons. We got this recently in Chainsaw Man, too. Infinite Hotel. She said that awfully calmly. <laughs> the Chainsaw Man solution is just you just gotta out crazy it. And whatever you do for the love of God, do not give the panic girl a knife. She's already figured out, damn, she's still kind of sending. Oh, it's working, it's working, it's working. Did the other girl even run? Whoa, look who it is! Young Gojo and new opening. In the past, the, these openings have been so good. Hidden in inventory, premature death. Why does so much of this look like prequel? Are we just like taking a break from the crew, from Yuji and Megumi and Nobara? Huh. Very interesting. That split screen between Gojo and Ghetto. Oh, it looks like they're having so much fun back when things were good. What about uh, the kid? What's his name from Jujutsu Kaisen Zero? Oh, Gojo's happy days. He's like extra smiley. This is a really interesting choice to go backwards at this point. But I'm super pumped to see Gojo's high school years. <laughs> this explains a lot of their, their little conflict. Their dynamic in season one. Oh, interesting. Very interesting knowing what we know. Wait, 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 wait. Shoko, wait, Shoko, Shoko. Oh boy. <laughs> Here we go. Damn, I know her, but I can't remember how I know her. Double pay. They'll find a way not to pay you, though. <laughs> I feel like Gojo is one of those nightmare students that you love anyway. I want to see this full basketball game. I was 100% expecting to dunk that. Some kind of infinite dunk. That certainly developed into a plan. Here we go. Brick. <laughs> I feel attacked. Thanks, Gojo. That's not gonna stop me from spouting some BS right now. I'm not sure I totally comprehend that interaction, and I may be either misinterpreting or misremembering Ghetto, but it does connect with me how just this kind of talking at all is a pitfall and, and set up for his later disregard for human life, just because of the fact that he's placing kind of a, a judgment on those they're helping. There's a very clear rift. It's like we, the Jujutsu Sorcerers, are doing all this work to protect this weaker class. I mean, there is a reality to that. They are making tremendous sacrifices for people who don't know or understand curses and are also causing curses, but there's also a huge arrogance in that. And it's easy to imagine from there, you make the leap that because I'm in this position, because I have more understanding and more knowledge, and because of my sacrifices, I therefore have a right to decide the value of each of these ranks and human life within. This is very sinister, but I can imagine that a lot of times people who have a power or whose stated aim is to help guide a certain group of people or a population, on some level carry a resentment or a value judgment on the very people that they're assigned to help. There's this prevalent idea you see in media because it represents a facet of actual life where it's like I know what's best for them or I know what's best for you to read into Gojo's point a little bit or at least just his dismissiveness of this whole thing this idea of the strong rule over the weak while it may contain an element of truth can be a dangerous way of thinking if it leads to any kind of arrogance or undeserved grandeur as well as the trap of making oneself and one's personal views the locus of a moral system from which action is generated 
Soto de Hana Soka, Satori, Savishin Boga. You can tell Gojo's soul above it. Whereas Gojo was really attached to his ideology. But they're both afraid of the principle. She wisely left. Imagine something being too big for Gojo. Although I guess this is kind of a prequel. Erase her? Is the hit? I see Jujutsu Kaisen management has not changed. That's a really cool curse. <laughs> right? <laughs> so there's support structure falls apart. Man, this Jujutsu society, it always feels so... <laughs> Hung together by a thread, so scattered. Don't mind me just gonna borrow your body. Oh, this is a really interesting conundrum. Oh, I thought you said erase her. That gave the wrong impression. Nowhere in the consideration is the girl's choice or autonomy so far. But given that they made her sexy and did that bath shot, I suspect she'll be around a little longer. Yeah, maybe they want Tengen to evolve. Kind of curious what that would mean. Yeah, they know about Tengen. But I thought it was in a different way. Uh -huh. I mean, he can back it up. Kojo just does not give a crap because he doesn't have to. No. Oh, there you go. Kojo's just being Gojo. Always. That's why I love him. Hi. Huh? Okay. Oh. Can you get there? Q combated Kokun. Why do his his abilities look a lot like Megumi's? He really dressed up for the occasion. Q is going with that concierge aesthetic. Wow, they really have outfits. These are definitely clothes. Uh, the confidence. Love it. But he backs it up. It's legit. Oh, this... The Zenin clan we've heard so much about. Oh, what? That's... Isn't that Megumi? Megumi's name? Man. This is really playing on my weaknesses. <laughs> Hit me with all these names. Yeah, that's his last name. And they call him Guru. Huh. Does this explain some of some of Gojo's interest in, in him? You can tell he's keenly watching him. Episode 25, Hidden Inventory. That's a really interesting start to season two that I did not expect at all. Flashing back to the past. Not gonna lie. Just kind of hoping for some dancing from this ending. How are we supposed to get lost to paradise with this? Hope we get more basketball. I would legit watch a whole episode Ghetto and, Go and Gojo playing basketball together. Just some cursed bros playing hoops. We got a baseball episode, why not? It's also, it's weird. It's, it doesn't happen often when, like, you know how this ends. You know how this relationship ends. And they're really playing up the friendship angle in all this. Like, it's just them having fun, goofing off in high school. Their trio also seems to have reflection or mirror the, the main trio from season one of Yuji, Megumi, and... Nobara. Weird, weird. Oh, well, we get no, there's no, uh, Juju Sampo this time? Am I watching season two? Am I watching the right thing? I feel like I, I like, stumbled into an OVA. Not sure if this is going to be a short arc to start the season, or if this is the season. I imagine it would be great either way. One of the things that excites me the most about it is just the chance to watch Gojo develop. I mean, he already seems like who he is. He has his natural personality of being kind of carefree. It's just too cool above everything. As I've said in the past, one of the things I love about Gojo is that whoever he is, whatever he says and whatever he does, you know that's who he really is because he can afford to do anything he wants because of his power and because of his skill. So like any goodness he has is in a sense more good because you know it's really 100% from his core. You could say the same thing about his evil, though we just haven't seen much evil out of him. We've seen some some sinister moments, some dark moments where he's expressed the willingness to do certain things. He also, you know, he has a very, very serious side when he needs to, when it's called out of him or 
maybe a better way to say it is when he's interested enough to show it. But his personality is so great, it's enviable. And he's a, a great counterpoint with Ghetto, who, I mean, we know where Ghetto goes, who's very intellectually opinionated about his role in morality, obviously to his detriment long term. But at least at this point, they're similar enough to really care about each other and respect each other. The opening alluded to this incident or that day, right? Something is going to happen that divides them. I think that'll be really exciting to watch. As a side note, there was a line earlier in the episode where Ghetto said to Gojo, don't pick on the weak. And his answer was, what kind of idiot picks on the strong? Could be nothing, but that hits on possible foreshadowing for a danger of Gojo, like I've been predicting for a long time, and I could be totally wrong, that Gojo is just too good to be true, and he's gonna be incapacitated or killed at some point in the show. It's my hunch. Cause like we've been leaning on him. We've been leaning on Big Brother Gojo. Nothing bad can happen if Gojo's around, pretty much. It seems just too narratively interesting to pass up to not take him out. And he has this this confidence that is totally justified and backed by real talent, skill, absolute power, but could that be a blind spot for him? Could that be a weakness where he overestimates himself? Especially when it's been made so clear that the enemy 100% acknowledges that and realizes that in order to affect any goal they want, they have to take out Gojo.